Welcome back to another Google AdMob Developer Tutorial. My name is Justin Malandrucolo, and today I'm going to show you how to integrate the User Messaging Platform SDK, or UMP SDK, into your app on Unity. The UMP SDK provides a collection of APIs that you can use to gather consent from your users, which helps you to comply with privacy laws and regulations. Let's take a look at the AdMob user interface and see the privacy message I have configured, which the UMP SDK presents, giving your users the ability to consent to how their data is used. A complete integration of the UMP SDK includes the following key steps. I'll walk you through each step using our existing Hello World sample, which is linked in the description. First, we'll request for consent information, then load and present a privacy message, I'll show you when to initialize the Google Mobile Ads SDK. Then we will test your integration. Next, implement a privacy options button. And lastly, I'll talk about how to optimize your integration. So let's jump into a demo. Here we have our Hello World sample, which has two relevant scripts for this video. Google Mobile Ads Controller and our helper file, Google Mobile Ads Consent Controller. All UMP code will live in the Consent Controller class. Starting in the Google Mobile Ads Consent Controller, let's import the UMP SDK, which is already packaged in with the Google Mobile Ads SDK. So step one, let's request for the most recent consent information. It's important to do this on every app launch. To start, in our Gather Consent Helper method, Initialize a blank consent request parameters object. Next, type consent information dot update, which requires a callback and our request parameters. The callback returns a nullable form error for any error handling. You'll want to forward the callback to the action passed into the helper method. That's all you need to do to fetch the most up-to-date consent information. Step two, load and present a consent form. Inside the callback, type consent form dot load and show consent form if required. In this step, be sure to also forward the callback to the action passed into the gather consent helper method. If the method doesn't throw an error, it will do one of two things. If consent is required for this user, the SDK loads and presents a consent form. The callback returns when the form is dismissed. Or, if consent is not required, the callback is invoked immediately. At this point, you now have enough information to initialize the Google Mobile Ads SDK and start loading ads. One more thing, add a can request ads helper variable that can be accessed from our Google Mobile Ads Controller class. Jumping into our Google Mobile Ads Controller class, let's now use our helper class to initialize the SDK. We want to initialize the Mobile Ads SDK after the consent gathering process has completed. With our consent controller, call its helper method. Query can request ads as a layer of verification before initializing the SDK. If it returns true, you're good to go. I'm recording this in New York, so I won't see a GDPR consent form, but what if I want to see how my app behaves for users in privacy regulated regions such as Europe? This is possible with just a few lines of code. Back in our consent controller class, create the consent debug settings object and set the debug geography to debuggeography.eea. For this tutorial, we're going to use the iOS platform as our example. After building, let's run our app. And there we have a consent form. 
If you are using a real iOS device, run the app and check the logs for test device identifiers. All one word. For those on Android, check the logs for consent debug settings. All one word. The log will include an alphanumeric ID that you can extract and replace this placeholder string with in your debug settings. Now that we know how to show a consent form on App Start, we now have to let users modify their consent choices in your app at any time. This is commonly done by adding a button in your app's settings page. Still in the Consent Controller class, in the Update Callback, check Consent Information Dot privacy options requirement status to determine if you need to enable your button or not. If the status is required, the button should be enabled. When a user interacts with your button, present the form using consent form dot show privacy options form. The callback is invoked when the form is dismissed or if an error occurs and then forward the callback to the action passed into our helper method. Switching to our Google Mobile Ads Controller class, we can invoke the helper method like so. Let's run our app again. Our new privacy settings button is now wired up. Lastly, let's talk about app optimization. Your app will have already gathered consent from returning users, so waiting for consent information's update callback can delay your ad impression. You can optimize this by attempting to initialize the SDK outside of the update callback. Checking the Can Request Ads API in two places ensures an optimal ads experience for new users and returning users. As part of this optimization, make sure to add a Boolean flag to only initialize the SDK and load ads once during the consent gathering process. And there you have it. To learn more, check out the resources in the description below. Today, we walk through how to gather consent in your mobile application by fetching consent information and loading a privacy message. We then use that information to initialize the mobile ads SDK and enable a privacy settings button. We hope the video was helpful for you. Feel free to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. And remember to subscribe to AdMob for more technical content.